At his height, Alex Salmond was not just the face, but the embodiment of the Yes movement. He led an explosion of support for independence in the 2014 referendum that changed Scottish politics. He could turn a phrase. Yeah, it's a great prospect to look forward to. We'll be a, an independent country. We'll build a more prosperous economy. But above all, we'll build a, a fairer society. He could turn voters too. The SNP 14,650. Making the SNP an election winning machine. In 2007, history. The SNP wins power in the Scottish Parliament. I declare that Alex Salmond is selected as this Parliament's nominee for appointment as First Minister. 2011, one better, an outright majority. Alex Salmond was Nicola Sturgeon's mentor until he was her enemy. The SNP's two leading figures went to war in 2021 over accusations of sexual misconduct and their handling by the Scottish Government. He was cleared in a criminal trial a year earlier, but Miss Sturgeon made clear there was no way back. <laughs> Alex Salmond led a breakaway independence party, Alaba, that failed to fracture the SNP's dominance. It was, after all, a dominance he had helped create the former economist who led the party twice and gave it mainstream appeal. Alex Salmond spent a political lifetime pursuing an independent Scotland, a cause he never stopped fighting for. Well, friends and rivals alike were quick to pay tribute, Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer, saying Alex Salmond was a monumental figure of Scottish and UK politics. He leaves behind a lasting legacy. Former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called him a huge figure and said, while I disagreed with him on the constitutional question, there was no denying his skill in debate or his passion for politics. And Scotland's current First Minister, John Swinney, says he is deeply shocked and saddened at his untimely death, saying Alex worked tirelessly and fought fearlessly for the country that he loved and for her independence. Well, let's get more now from our Scotland correspondent, Catherine Sampson, who is live for us tonight in Edinburgh. Catherine. Uh, Kieran, it is hard to uh, fully convey the shock in Scotland tonight at the news of Alex Salmon's passing at the age of 69. He, of course, leaves behind uh, his wife, Moira. Now, many across the UK tonight will remember Alex Salmon from that time in 2014, from the independence uh, referendum when he led the Yes campaign, where he really fell just short of achieving his goal. I myself spoke to Alex Salmon just a few weeks ago to mark the 10th anniversary of that referendum. As you say, he was a man who kept fighting. He told me he still felt that that dream of independence was in sight. And on his uh, feud, his well-publicised feud with Nicholas Sturgeon, uh, he told me he thought there might at some point be some room for reconciliation. Of course, in more recent years, all the headlines have centred around his resignation from the SNP in 2018 following those allegations of sexual harassment. That so He was cleared of all charges uh, in that case. Uh, and, you know, he was, of course, a figure that uh, many loved, some loathed, some disagreed with, some truly, truly followed. In terms of the tributes that have been paid tonight, as well as from the current First Minister, John Swinney, who we expect to hear from uh, on camera tomorrow, uh, we've heard from Rishi Sunak, who said, while I disagreed with him on the constitutional question, there was no denying his skill in debate, his passion for politics. From the Scottish Labour leader, Anna Sarwar, tonight, he says this news will come as a shock to all who knew him in Scotland. Alex was a central figure in politics for over three decades. His contribution to the Scottish political landscape cannot be overstated. Catherine, thank you very much for that. Now, uh, Ian Blackford was leader of the SNP in the House of Commons from 2017 to 2022, and uh, he joins us uh, this evening uh, from Cardiff. Uh, Mr Blackford, what are your reflections on the news of Alex Salmon's death? You know, I'm just very saddened that Alec has been taken. I think we're all pretty devastated by the news, and I think we can reflect on a man that gave so much to Scottish public life when he became the leader of the SNP. We were a, a marginal force in some respects, certainly in terms of political representation. Then he took us into government and, of course, led that campaign for Scottish independence, led us into that referendum where we came, let's remember, very close to winning in 2014. And I think that will be the legacy that he will be remembered for. And let's not forget the SNP has been in government 
since 2007, and a lot of the thanks for that must go to Alec and the leadership he gave, particularly in those early years. People forget, don't they, 2014 and that extraordinary movement with Alex Salmond as the figurehead that seemed to completely take over UK politics for a time. I mean, how did he do it? Well, you know, when Alec became First Minister in 2007, he had a party that was ready for government. He had a cabinet that I think excelled, a number of very strong characters, the likes of Nicola Sturgeon, of course, that became First Minister herself, John Swinney, Mike Russell, Kenny McCaskill, Alec Neil, and so on, Rosanna Cunningham, that has done so well too in government. So it's a government that was fit for purpose. And I think the people of Scotland responded to the leadership that the SNP were giving, not just under Alec, but the team, Team Scotland, that we, that we had at that time. But what were Alec Salmon's particular talents? Because he was not a man that interviewers like to interview, and he had this way with words, didn't he, and a certain charisma... He did. He was a communicator. And I suppose if you think about when he was elected to Parliament, he, he really hit the ground running, ejected from Parliament very early on because he took a stance against the budget and was, was thrown out. And I guess that really brought him to an audience, not just in Scotland, but throughout the UK. And there's no doubt that he had supreme communication skills. Um, he was very good at seizing the moment. He was very strong in debate. And in many respects, he had a lot of natural leadership qualities. What he did do, uh, certainly when he became First Minister, is made sure that he operated as part of a team. He was very good at delegating to colleagues round about him. And it wasn't just about the Cabinet secretaries. It was about those that were supporting him. His mm. staff as well played a, a key role in all of that. It was a formidable partnership, wasn't it, that he had with Nicola Sturgeon? I mean, how how yeah, much regret is there within the independence movement about how that relationship soured? You know, I think all of us, all of us that, are, that have been involved in that would, would regret the way things that happened. They happened for a, a reason, of course. But, I mean, the, we all came into politics, whether you're talking about Nicola or Alec or John Swinney or so many others, to lead the country, to lead the country towards independence. And that legacy that Alec leaves is a very strong movement for Scottish independence, yes, we need to make sure that we can bring the movement together, that we can lead the people of Scotland. You know, we're living in a cost of living crisis. But as at we the end, know. Mr Blackford, Mr Salmond was one of the fierce critics of what that independence movement had become under the SNP. We talk about legacy today, but how do you define a legacy when it ended on, on, on such a contested note? Well, if you, if you look at polling for independence, support for independence is still close to 50%. It's up to those of us that are here now to make sure that we take that on, that we deliver that vision as to what an independent Scotland will be. And, and we make sure that 2014 wasn't the end of the story. It was a path on the roadmap, if you like. It was a map way point. And that we make sure that we deliver that legacy and Scotland becomes an independent country, as I believe it will do. Would you have liked to have seen Alex Salmond welcomed back into the fold? You know, I think what happened over the last few years has, has been well documented. There's been a, a fork in the road that's taken place with Alec and, and, and the SNP. And, and, and of course, I think he established his own party, was entitled to do that. We can work together right across the independence movement to make sure that we deliver mm. that independent Scotland that we want to see. But that fork in the road was one that was not possible to, to mend, I'm afraid. This was a lifetime, wasn't it, devoted to that cause? And when did you sort of come to know that Alex Salmond had that special political quality, at least? Very early on, we actually worked in adjacent offices in St Andrews Square in Edinburgh in the early 1980s, and uh, I used to spend a lot of time in his company. He and I were both members of the, the 79 group of the SNP, the, the left-wing group. So I, I knew Alex very early on, and I think that strength of personality, that, that warmth that he has, that ability to engage with people, is something that was very self-evident from a, from a very early age, and it made, made sure that he was ready to assume the, the reins of political office when he stood up first as a, an MP, then as SNP leader. And, and given all that, that's happened and, and the way things have, have panned out, I mean, how, how would you like him then to be remembered? I think he should be remembered for giving the leadership that he did to the SNP and the independence movement. I mean, you talk about this being a lifetime's work for, for Alec, and you know, I think back to the late 70s, early 80s, the SNP were down to two MPs. We were at 10% in the polls. Alec took us from that position of being at the margins, if you like, of political life in Scotland to being the driving force. And I suspect that couldn't have been done without the strength of personality. 
his characteristics, his leadership that he gave to the to the party, to the government and to the country over that period. Ian Blackford, thank you very much for those uh, reflections on the death of Alex Salmond.